OK, so we're going to have a look at chapter four, which is on correlation. And this actually comes up again in Applied Maths year two for chapter one. So it's just going to be a pretty short chapter. So first of all, I want to recap GCSE correlation because this is definitely something that you've seen before. So correlation gives the strength of the relationship and the type of relationship between two variables. Data with two variables is known as bivariate data. So I'm going to just dive in with these four examples that we've got here, and we're going to describe the type of correlation. So we're going to descri describe the strength and the type of relationship between them. So I'm going to zoom in on this one that we've got here. We've got the score that a student received in English and a score that a student received in a maths test. Um, each of these little dots is going to represent a student as well. So it's bivariate data. So the type of correlation, well, we can see that this is sloping upwards. So if something is sloping upwards, the type of correlation is going to be positive. This is where as the English score is increasing, so is the math score. And for this type, we would assess the strength by saying that it's weak. Although they do appear to be going upwards like this, they're not all perfectly going along the line or even close to the line. So I would describe this as a weak uh, positive correlation. OK. Now I'll have a look at this next one that we've got over here. So this time we've got the age of a person and the weekly time that they spend on the internet in hours. Well, you can see here, this one looks like it is generally sloping downwards. So it is going to be a negative correlation. And again, they're not very tightly closed or uh, tightly packed to that line. So this is going to be weak negative correlation for that description of the correlation there. Then I'm going to have a look at this one down here. So this one is the distance that is travelled in kilometres and the cost of the train fare. So this one looks like it is definitely going to be positive correlation. And I think as well as it being positive, it looks pretty strong positive correlation here because all of those points seem to be tightly done around that line there. I'm going to explain this red box in just a second, OK? I've then got this last one. This is a number of people in a city called Dave. Maybe there are lots of different cities around the world called Dave. Probably not, but just imagine that there are lots of different cities around the world called Dave. And the crime rates. We don't know exactly what this crime rate statistic here is measuring. Maybe it's the number of, cr um, of crimes per 100,000 people in the population or something like that. And this one doesn't appear to have this positive or negative correlation. So this one is actually just no correlation. And because there's no correlation, we don't need to describe whether it is strong or whether it is weak. Just one more thing I wanted to say about the types of correlation. You could have positive correlation that looks like this, or you could have positive correlation that looks like this. The, the how steep the line is, is not what we're describing with correlation. With correlation, we're describing whether it is going uphill or downhill and how close the individual points, the individual data points are to that line. It doesn't describe how steep it actually is. So I mentioned I was going to talk about what was inside this box here. Let's read through this. The vertical axis usually depends on the horizontal axis value. For this reason, the distance would be an independent or explanatory variable and the cost is the dependent or the response variable. So this one along the bottom, it kind of makes sense that we put the one on the bottom, which is the thing that the one on the side is going to depend on. And that makes sense because however much the train ticket costs is probably going to depend on how far you are traveling. So we call the one on the bottom is the independent or the explanatory variable. And the one on the side, the y um, axis, is the one that is the dependent or the response variable because it's responding to the bit on the bottom. So this one, I guess, the maths and English score, either way round, either one of those could have been the explanatory variable and either one could have been the response variable. I think this one makes sense to put the age as the um, explanatory variable, because we would usually think that the amount of time that someone was spending on the Internet was going to be depending on their age. And this, this one, it's seeming to think that um, maybe the crime rate will depend on how many people there are in the city, but it doesn't seem like there's any correlation anyway there. And you may get asked on these kind of things, so it's important you know what these definitions are. So there's two important correlation concepts I want to start off with. The important point number one 
is if the question asks you to interpret the correlation between two variables, what it means is to give a worded description in the context of the problem. It does not mean to just say what the correlation is. You need to actually interpret it, which is what does it mean? How do you explain that? So for this one that I've got here, it's the um, the number of the amount of time on the internet and the age. And we've already talked about this one. The type of correlation that it wants us to state is weak negative correlation. Now they may use the word describe or interpret, but I think they are more likely to use the word interpret. So it asks you to interp interpret the relationship between age and weekly time on the internet. So this means actually explain it in the context of the problem like we've got up here. So this means that the older someone is, the less time they spend on the internet per week. You could have written that the other way around. You could have said that the younger someone is, then the more time that someone spends on the internet. But the key point here is for negative correlation, as this one is increasing, the other variable is decreasing. So usually we think of the negative correlation as one variable goes up, another one goes down, or vice versa, as one goes down, the other one goes up. That's what negative correlation is. So don't forget, if you ever see this word interpret, you must actually explain it in words, not just say the type of correlation that there is. So the second important point is about a causal relationship. Now, causal relationship means that one thing causes another. In other words, there's like a, a knock on effect. So let's read what it says. It says that two variables have a causal relationship if a change in one variable directly causes a change in the other. Just because two variables show correlation, it does not necessarily mean that they have a causal relationship. So whilst we might you look at um, a graph and we think that there is some kind of correlation, it doesn't necessarily mean that there is a causal relationship. There may be correlation, but that doesn't mean that there is actually a connection between those two things. So let's read this example, see here, uh, this example we've got here and see if we can explain it. So Hideko was interested to see if there was a relationship between what people earn and the age which they left education or training. She says her data supports the conclusion that more education causes people to earn a lower hourly rate of pay. Give one reason why Hideko's conclusion might not be valid. So when you look here, it does appear that there is a negative correlation which would support her claim, but why the conclusion might not be valid. So I think what we should say here is it is possible that although they are correlated, there is not a causal relationship between age leaving education and hourly pain. But it actually asks you to give a reason why it might not be valid. So we could say, um, the conclusion may not be valid as it is possible that, well, we need to try and explain why is it that there are some young people who are getting paid more, sorry, some people who left school early getting paid more than some people who have just left education when they're at the age of 25. Why is it that someone who left at 15 is getting paid a bit more than someone who left when they are 21 and maybe went to university? Well, maybe it's because they've been in the job for a bit longer and they've already got more work experience. So the conclusion may not be valid and it is possible that those who left early have got more work experience and so earn more. But 
the likely thing that's going to happen here is that after maybe instead of it being the hourly pay when they've got to the age of 25, if it was looking at their age at 35, we would probably expect the trend to be a, dip, a bit different because we know that, that if people leave education later, they are more likely to get a higher hourly pay just because of how the world of work works. OK, so this one doesn't appear to necessarily have a causal relationship. It has a correlation, but it might not show that there is actually a causal relationship between them. So let's try another one of these um, that's going to blend together those two things we've got here. So this first bit says I've got variable X and variable Y, and it just says describe the type of correlation shown. So I think this is positive. I think this looks pretty strong, this positive here. So for part A, I am going to say strong positive correlation. They look really close to align them. And then it says for part B that the scatter diagram shown uses the following data, the number of fast food restaurants in a town. So this is the number of fast food restaurants in a town X and the number of serious road accidents in a town Y. So this is my road accidents that we have here. And it says comma. Oh, so sorry, but I actually interpret. Oh, I didn't say this. It should have said. Oh, it does say it. Silly me, I'm not reading my own question. Interpret the correlation between X and Y. Well, this is showing that the more fast food restaurants, the more fast food restaurants in a town, the more road accidents. Okay, it's a positive correlation. The more fast food restaurants there are, like one of these ones, there's a high number of road accidents. And then the last part's pretty vague. It just says comment on your answer to part B. Well, this doesn't appear to be a causal relationship. It doesn't seem to be that if a town has got more fast food restaurants, people are dying more in car accidents or people are having more car accidents. That would be a crazy thing to have as a causal relationship. So what I'm going to say here is... Um, comment on my answer to part B. This doesn't mean that there is a causal relationship. Between fast food restaurants. And accidents, in other words, if you suddenly built a new fast food restaurant, it doesn't mean that you're going to then have more road accidents in that town. But what it could be, why is there this? Why is there a positive correlation? There could be a third variable they are both correlated with. And maybe you can think of what that might be. Maybe the size of the town. If you've got a big town, you're probably going to have more fast food restaurants and you're going to have more road accidents. So, of course, there's going to be, a, it seems, there's a correlation between them. Or it could be the size of the town or maybe the number of main roads in a town. The number of main roads in a town, there would be a positive correlation with how many fast food restaurants there are, because they're probably going to be on a main road. And the number of road accidents is going to be correlated with that. So just to make a really final point here, just because there's correlation, it does not mean that one, this thing here has caused this thing here. It just shows that there is a relationship between them. And we need to be really careful about that. OK, so we're going to um, now have a go at doing exercise 4A.